Good morning. Good morning. Welcome everybody to the Saturday Morning Mastermind. I'm your host, Samantha studebaker Carl, home, talking to you from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm here with my good friends, Catherine and Sandy, and hopefully we'll have a, a few other people jump on today and, and join us in our discussion. But um, today, our main topic is going to be about Chapter 16 of The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, and uh, but we need to finish up from chapter 15 as well. We've, the past few weeks, we've discussed the, let's see, what is it? The seven different habits that help you reach success in your life. And last week, we got through all of them except for, or we got through the rest of them except for number seven. So we're going to touch on that first and then go into chapter 16. But before we do that, I want to just give my friends an opportunity to introduce themselves. And um, for those of you who are watching this as a recording, there'll be some links below this video on YouTube where you can join us in our Facebook group. You can um, connect with us and jump on here and participate as well. So, okay, ladies, jump on it. Good morning. It's Catherine Clement in Boulder, Colorado. And looking forward to this chapter and glad to have Sandy Root back with us. Whoop, whoop. Good morning, Sandy Root here in Miami Beach. It's not so sunny today, a little windy and cloudy and cold. <laughs> well, maybe not cold, I won't say that. Um, yeah, happy to be back and looking forward to closing out this book with you guys. And happy to see you. Awesome, awesome. Welcome, Jason. We saw that you popped on there. Hopefully you can hear us, and when you get back over here, you can jump out and introduce yourself as well. Um, but we'll go ahead and get the discussion going while uh, we're waiting for you to come back. Um, okay, so so last week, we finished our discussion, or almost finished our discussion of chapter 15, and we finalized out with habit number six, which was be willing to pay the price. And um, so this week, we'll do the last one that is habit number seven, which is practice light edge integrity. Integrity. Let me just read a little blip of that section there. Let's see. Okay, well, I'll just read this. Everyone knows the business startups have a high failure rate. The big reason people usually cite is lack of sufficient capital, and it's true that is an important one, but there is often another cause that, that lies unseen and unacknowledged, and it is just as big as lack, lack of capital. It's the lack of su sufficient slight edge integrity. There are many definitions of integrity, honesty, truthfulness, congruence between words and deeds, the aspect of integrity that is most applicable to the slight edge is this, is what you do when no one is watching. So I think it's referring to the fact that, okay, if we, you know, we decide we're going to reach this success, there's a lot of time when we're by ourselves and we can make a choice of, are we going to actually do the actions that are going to push us in the direction of reaching our goals. I mean, for instance, if we're, if we've decided that uh, we are going to go on a diet and we're going to be eating more healthy food and we're sitting at home by ourselves and we have the option to snack on something we shouldn't eat or not snack at all or snack on something healthy, which are we going to choose? And, and are we going to choose that because we know no one else is watching and so maybe it doesn't count? <laughs> You know, or, you know, I mean, it's, it's those kinds of things, but it, it works in, in all aspects of, um, of our lives as well. Don't you think, what you guys think? I think this is the difference between the 1% and the 99% is that it is, is are those moments when we're left to ourselves. And um, like, I, I know people that think that if they, if no one sees them eating it, the calories don't count, you know, and they're, and they're obese people. So, I mean, they should like get it by now, but it, it's just, I mean, I get it. I, I eat stuff I shouldn't eat too, you know, but I have to say I'm pretty good. I, I have really good willpower when it comes to food, thank God. But I've been forced to that because of my health. Like, 
if I had, if I was, didn't have to heal things in my body, I probably wouldn't eat, you know, I, I would cheat more than I do, but I'm pretty good about it. Um, but we all have our weaknesses. Like there's other things that I do that I know that I shouldn't do, or there, there's, there's those moments. But now, actually, this is funny because you, people remark, you're not on camera anymore. One of the reasons I'm not on camera anymore, one is because I'm so freaking tired. <laughs> you guys do not want to see me. But the other thing is like, because of my schedule and being so busy, when I am on a Zoom and I can be off camera, I can actually like do my planks or, or do my yoga or like do things that I don't have time to do otherwise. And, um, and that's how I hold myself accountable to those things. Cause, cause you know, you have to make, you have to learn to make use of the time that you have. And it's not that I'm not fully engaged with whoever I am still fully engaged, but I'm also like able to get some of these other things done that I need to get done. So, um, but yeah, it, you know, when you're in bed, sometimes I get in bed and I realize, shit, I haven't done my, my plank or my, well, now I'm doing more than one, you know, but and some push ups and different things, like I'm adding to my regimen, right? But, um, but I force myself to at least do, there's a certain amount of like yoga and at least one plank a day that I have to do minimum, bare minimum. And if I go to bed and I realize I haven't done it, I mean, I have to get up out of bed and do it. But would I commit to driving to the gym every day? No. <laughs> yeah. So I think you also have to be sort of realistic in, the, in what you set for yourself. And we're going to talk about goals in the next chapter. Um, like you, ha you, ha you can't, you have to, well, we'll get the goals, but you know, you have to be kind of realistic in what you set for yourself or you're going to set yourself up to fail. I think not that you shouldn't try to spur yourself on, but you guys know what I mean. If I, if I committed to driving to the gym every day, like, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I missed the quote because uh, I think it was something about integrity um, and my internet had gone out, but I'll add on what I think from what you ladies have said. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think number one, that's a good point, Catherine, to like be realistic with uh, the goals we're setting. Um, I think that's something I've always been pretty good with. Um, you know, food wise, it, that's always been easy for me and, and uh, exercise. And I guess for me, it seems like I'll just put too many things in my schedule. <laughs> like I love to do so many things and I try so many different practices to um, be successful in different areas. And then by the end of the day, I'm like, how on earth did I think I was going <laughs> to do all this stuff? And, I sometimes like wondering how other people get stuff done. Like, how do they do all this? <laughs> but I think sometimes I just overwhelm myself with things to do and can't always get to them. Um, but like you, you know, if I'm in bed and something that was really important to me was uh, I forgot to do, like I'll get up and, and do it. <laughs> because I'm like, okay, you know, I guess maybe I'm harder on myself and that makes me more like stick to the things I say I'm going to do. Like I'm, I and maybe too hard on myself to the point of like beating myself up sometimes. But I know that I have a real strong integrity with my own word to myself and to the greater. Um, so when I say I'm going to do something, like I know there's a greater energy as well and I'm, I'm connected to this higher energy. So um, to me, that's important because I know if nobody's around, there's still some, something's listening and watching and seeing what I'm doing. So I'm like, I better stick to this because if I'm creating this in my life and, and this energy sees me slacking off, the, this creator will say, no, look, she's slacking off. She doesn't really want it. Um, she's not going to receive this, you know, sort of like that. So I find that connection too. Like if I'm, 
not in full integrity with myself, that the universe knows that too. And, and will be like, okay, you want to half ass this? Then I'll half ass with you. How about that? <laughs> so, yeah, that's it for now. Hey, Karen, glad you could join us. I don't know what we're seeing there in your video, but. <laughs> hey, Jason. I was going to say that's my hair, but it's not. <laughs> I don't know what that is either. Uh, it took half an hour. It took longer than that for my monitor to say, oh, oh you want me? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. So how long have you been talking and what have you said? Oh, it's only been a few minutes, and uh, we're we we're going to talk about chapter 16 here in a minute, but we're just kind of follow, finalizing out with chapter 15 with the last um, the last habit, which was practice light edge integrity. And at the end of the chapter, it um, it summarizes that last one, and it says uh, to remember to do the things you've committed to doing, even when no one else is watching. So that light edge integrity is to do it when no one else is watching. <laughs> And, you know, one thing that, that kind of came to mind um, for me, like at my job, we have a lot of people that are like, you know, I, I really want to get ahead. I want to get, you know, I, I, I want to be promoted. I want to make more money. I want whatever. And, um, and when the boss is around, they're going 100 mile an hour doing everything they're supposed to do, you know, right on top of the, all the things that are, that are required from them in their job. And then, but when the boss isn't there... <laughs> <laughs> you see them taking longer breaks and, you know, shopping in a section that they aren't even supposed to be working, you know, I mean, it's little things like that. And that's, that's kind of one of the things that, that this is talking about. It's like, you know, if you want something, you want to achieve some level of success in some way, it's not just about when the boss is standing over your shoulder. It's what you do all the time that makes the difference. It, it's, you know, cause you're not going to achieve that success if you're only doing it like sandy was saying if you're only half assing it right <laughs> you know that's i had an interesting thought about that i think there's a lot of people that don't even realize you know they're not that self-conscious or self-aware that they even realize that they switch i i think i mentioned two or three um saturdays ago that i was i was uh had become aware again of sub personalities, and um, I think we all have this sub personality that you know is kind of like a uh, you know kind of comes under the radar, and uh, you know so the boss is gone, so you know let's let's party, let's uh, loosen up, let's not do all the things. Um, Man, I had a good thought in there as I was talking, and I can't remember what it was. <laughs> so I guess I'll be quiet. I haven't heard from you this morning, Jason. How's it going? <laughs> oh, darn it. I knew you'd be calling me out. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Um, yeah. Um, and it's uh, great to be here. Um, yeah, so much going on. And, uh, and it is um, because of a lot of the things that you were talking about that uh, I've been doing over the past, uh, you know, two or three years. Um, and, um, and yeah, just trying to stay consistent easily said but uh not so easily done sometimes um and sometimes you have to go with the flow and and maybe change um you know shift your um i don't know shift your mode or your your method for a little while and then come back to it um sometimes we're forced to do that i don't i don't think it's good to switch from it i think it's better to try to maintain a certain course um continuously and consistently and and uh you know but i like what you all were saying it's it's very um you know it's very telling you know when we start looking at our habits and and uh then we 
can really see, you know, where we've come from and why we're where we are. And um, I also really like what Sandy was saying about, you know, being, um, uh, being, you know, having consideration for um, how it's all connected and, and uh, the, the energies that are involved with, with what's going on in our lives too. Um, really also very, uh, very good points. And uh, I'm just really enjoying the conversation. So it's glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. It's great to be here. <laughs> Haven't had my morning coffee yet. So <laughs> uh, it is Saturday, right? I hope I'm not supposed to be at work. You know what's funny about it? If it wasn't Saturday, we wouldn't be here with you, Jason. Can you see yeah, us? Can you see me? Oh, you can't see me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do. I do. And you're coming in, in chroma color. <laughs> or, or some some kind of far off long ago. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, I, I remembered my thought. I drove taxi for a while in my life, which I have to admit is one of my one of my key times, one of my enjoyable times. Um, but, you know, now they have those uh, cams. You know, if you ever look at the front dash, you'll probably notice that there's a cam sitting there. And uh, so, you know, you you go through your driver training and you, you know, get in the car and you uh, drive a few days and you've had your mind on the cam and you're, you know, you're trying to be, Svelte and spoos, <laughs> and then then you realize you're doing something really stupid, like picking your nose in the traffic, or you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, but I was on the Indian one of the Indian reservations. I think there's five that skirt all of the Phoenix area. So one one of the one of the five that's right on the border there, and taking somebody home about two three o'clock in the morning. And, uh, went through the intersection, got slammed by somebody that didn't stop the other way. It's of course a four-way stop. You know, you've got a little dirt path here and a little dirt path there crossing, and so of course there's a four-way stop. And uh, I had I had a had a couple with me, and um, you know, fortunately, I I don't think I swore. You know, j just because they were there. I, it, if they hadn't been there, you know, the camera would have recorded all of that too. But uh, I don't know how many days afterwards I thought, I, I tried to replay that through in my mind. I tried to, I tried to remember, you know, was I doing something really dumb? Was I, you know, looking at the moon? Was I, I mean, it wasn't my fault that that, 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 that had happened, but um, it's interesting when you realize that there's videos all around. I mean, we happen to have videos on our house, which is the only ones I've ever seen around this area. But uh, it's so funny to me that people come to the door and they don't realize, you know, there's a video right on them. And so <laughs> they're there and sometimes you can you can make out what they're saying, reading their lips. And it's, it's just so funny uh, because it. I think whether we have sub-personalities at play or not, um, it's hard to keep, you know, keep conscious of that at all times, you know, keep aware at all times that somebody, they may not be watching me now, but if something happens, they can replay this and, you know, they'll have, they'll have video, they'll have audio, they'll, you know, they'll be able to put it together better than I will. They'll, I can have a conversation with them. They can say, you did such and so, and you can say, I never do that. I could, that couldn't have been me. <laughs> So I try, even in my home by myself, to at least occasionally think about, you know, there are people watching all the time, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, the same ones that watch you when you go to the bathroom, take a shower, you know. <laughs> like, like my old taxi friend, you know, the rough and gruff uh, guy that, you know, was about 87 years old. He's no doubt where he wants to be. So that's it. Thanks. And that reminded me of something I heard um, a few years ago when I was doing some online marketing. Um, I forget who said it, but they uh, said, you know, if you work for yourself in your home alone and you're working at home, 
alone and you're one of these people who needs motivation to get to work, you know, get your stuff done or you tend to get lazy, like pretend that there's a camera watching you. Like, would you, if you were looking through that camera at yourself, would you hire yourself? Would you want to hire you if, if, if you saw that? So pretend you have a camera and how would you act if, as if you were the boss, really the boss, which you are, you know? So I thought that was a good uh, way to help people maybe uh, look at really what they're doing and are they doing what they would do if they were in integrity with their boss or with themselves as their boss. So, good idea. Yeah, I think that um, that is probably one of the most important habits from that previous chapter is just that uh, it's that consistency, you know, I mean, it talks about that. And if you're not consistent when you're not, wa when no one's watching, then you're not being consistent. So you're, <laughs> you know, you're pretty much self-sabotaging there, right? Well, let's, um, unless somebody else has something else to say on this particular one, let's go ahead and start into chapter 16. Any Everybody, all good? Everybody good on that? I just have to say my book stops at chapter 13, so. <laughs> okay. All right. That's okay, because this one, um, I'll just read a little bit from the beginning of this so we know what we're talking about. And um, this one's uh, the, the title of the chapter is Three Steps to Your Dream. And it has a quote from Napoleon Hill's Law of Success. It says, the first comes the thought, then organization of that thought into ideas and plans, then transformation of those plans into reality. The beginning, as you will observe, is in your imagination. And, um, and Jeff Olson goes on to write, and he says, there's entire books written about how to set, pursue, and achieve your goals. Some of them are actually pretty good. You may or may not need an entire book on the topic. That's up to you. He says, I like to keep things as simple as possible because simple is usually far more effective. Even more importantly, simple is what works best with a slight edge. Remember, easy to do and you won't, you won't stray far from having your hands on the slight edge. And he says, um, for a goal to come true, there are three universal steps to reaching for a big dream. He says, you must make it specific, give it a deadline and write it down. You must look at it every day, and you must have a plan to start with. So his first step is, step one, write it down. The most critical skill for achieving success in any area whatsoever is a skill of envisioning. And then he says, um, envisioning means quite literally making something up out of thin air, making it real. It needs to become physical. In other words, you need to write it down. When you write it down, the moment you do, it, is, it has started to become real. And I kind of paraphrased. I just kind of like highlighted some stuff. So that's, um, those were quotes from that part, but it wasn't all in a row. So, um, so what do you guys think about that? Envisioning and then writing it down. I think that's awesome. <laughs> And it's reminded me to do it again. I wrote it, did this for the new year. I wrote some things down, but I haven't been reading it every day. And I sort of say, ah, forget it, whatever. I don't have time. <laughs> Out of integrity with that one. Um, but whenever I hear it, it always reminds me when I had, when I was moving from New York to Florida, I had a clear vision written down. I would read it every day. I would envision my move and it, it it worked. It was amazing. I probably read that thing, I don't know, must have been maybe around a month to two. I don't even remember how long that I was reading it every day and getting in the feeling of the excitement. And I had all the details written out of my move in my new place. And, um, and it ended up most of it being exactly how I had envisioned it. And things would just fell into place like so synchronistically. It was like amazing. I was like, wow, it was like a dream. <laughs> and so I remember that. So it's like, why don't I just get on it again and do it? You know, because I know it works. Um, so hearing it again, like after this, I'm going to get back on to writing, rewriting that and getting clear again and uh, reading it every day, doing it every day because it, it works. It's, it's amazing. I have an important question here. Uh, I was talking 
a week or two ago about um, writing this statement, and I said, you know, I wrote it by hand. Actually, I wrote it by hand the first four days, which was, you know, a lot of, it was like 88 statements. Um, and then I, then I started to do it on the computer. Does anyone have from their experience, like Sandy's experience of having this fall into place and pretty much like it was planned out and so forth, a, a definitive experience with one or the other being better of writing things out by hand or doing thing, you know, just typing things out. For me, I think um, writing, I have tried it by typing and I, it just doesn't feel as personal. Like I feel like I can't get into the feeling as more by looking at the computer. I feel like if I'm looking at my handwriting and reading it, it just sort of, it feels more, I don't know, more me, I guess. It's, and um, saying it out loud too is important for me too. Like, and really like even jumping up and down, like Lee, you know, like while I'm reading it or really feeling the feeling. But I find that um, I haven't done it on the computer that long, maybe because it did feel less personal to me. It just felt like I'm looking at a screen and I wasn't able to really feel my feelings as much. It, getting away from the screen and seeing my writing uh, made me be able to really envision it more and feel it better. If that helps. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. I'd like to respond to that because I was thinking along the same lines. Like I think you mentioned two different things there, uh, Samantha, with uh, writing it down and also envisioning it. Both very, both very powerful. I think that writing it down, uh, handwriting it, uh, definitely has a a different um, feel to it. And I've of, often noticed that when um, deciding to focus on a new goal that maybe has been outside my comfort zone, I found it interesting that when write, handwriting it, the first time you write that goal down, it's, it's a little shaky it, in your handwriting, or at least in mine. It, it was, it's like a little shaky. I don't, I'm not familiar with even the words to explain that goal. Um, it, it, and that's apparent in my handwriting. It's like, well, how do I, how do I word this? And then the second time I write it down, well, it's a little more clear. And then the third time and the fourth time it gets clearer and clearer. And so I've always found it interesting that it was evident in actually the the visual it was visually as evident in my handwriting about how uh, your my confidence level and my familiarity with that goal became more clear. You know, I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, that's interesting. I find that too. Like if or if it's almost like be careful what you ask for. Like I've noticed a shakiness because it's like. I have to be really careful. Is this really what I want? And it, it, does it make sense? And it, or is it too big of a thing that I'm thinking? Or and yeah, there, there's like that shakiness when you're first writing it down. I never really thought of that until you said it. So, but yeah, also really being reasonable with what you're writing. Like, is it something you can actually do? Because there's moments where I'll stop and I'm like, okay, is this realistic? Or, or you know, not realistic, but because you also want to push yourself too and, and push through comfort zones. But, you know, if you say you want to, okay, I'm going to make a million dollars in a month. Like, okay, is that really, really realistically possible? Or is that just cuckoo coat for Cocoa Puffs? So you have to be realistic with your goals, set dates and, and stuff like that too. Like, is it really doable? <laughs> To make it to make the envisioning process easy, like make it something that you really can believe it can come true, even if it is a little out there and 